Hi, I'm Mike Field. I'm the manager of transportation operations, and I just want to go over the Strathcona and Kirkendall Complete Street Study PIC number two. Uh, and I'll start off explaining uh, some of the context to the study, just for those that uh, are not familiar with it or just want to have a refresher of, of uh, where this came from. But with that, I'll start off. You're going to hear uh, quite a few references to complete streets, and I just wanted to define what complete streets are first. A uh, complete street is a, a street that basically attends to the needs of the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, the the way that that street function is dependent on the way that that neighborhood uh, really wants to use that street. So I'll give you an example of uh, an industrial street in Hamilton, like Burlington Street. Obviously, that street is meant to uh, service the industrial area of the city and move large vehicles and uh, get uh, the traffic in and out of those those industrial facilities. Uh, conversely, a neighborhood street where people live uh, isn't meant to serve those same purposes. So they're meant to, you know, get people to their homes, uh, have them. Uh, live in an environment that they can enjoy, whether it's walking or cycling. So the street construction needs to be different and the function of the street needs to be different. So complete street is more about uh, defining the function of the street and then making sure that the the uh, construction of the street and the function of that street attends to those needs. Um, within the city of Hamilton, we have uh, subscribed or prescribed to the Vision Zero uh, principles Back in 2009, Council approved the Vision Zero Action Plan, and Vision Zero is a pretty simple philosophy in that uh, all traffic-related injuries and fatalities are preventable, and that uh, through the efforts that we do, such as the Ward, Ward 3 Complete Street Study, is to work towards uh, eliminating all of those instances of injuries on our streets and uh, fatalities on our streets. The Ward 1 office, as well as uh, the city itself, has received a lot of uh, input and requests and concerns from residents who live in Ward 1 about safety of neighborhood streets. And in response to that, the Ward 1 councillor put forward a motion for us uh, in Public Works to undertake a comprehensive uh, review of the, the Ward neighborhoods to look at ways that we can improve uh, safety and comfort in those neighborhoods. And uh, that's what this complete street study is really looking to do. And uh, we're looking for solutions for um, those neighborhood streets that are attending to the needs of each and every street collectively. Uh, and then the primary objectives are really to reduce traffic speeds on neighborhood streets, enhance those public spaces, and then improve road safety for all road users. So this is PIC number two. PIC number one was in December of 2023, and this is uh, building on uh, that work. I'm just gonna go over uh, where we're at with PIC number two and with the study. So for today's uh, review, I'm gonna go over the schedule of the study, uh, the, the area that it's being looked at, um, the background and considerations that we've examined so far, public engagement that's been conducted. Uh, we're gonna go over the problems and oppor opportunity statement that's been developed based on feedback that we received from the public. We're gonna talk about key issues, uh, next steps, and then of course, ways to connect on, into the complete street study going forward. This project started uh, in uh, late 2023. Um, and I mentioned that there was a PIC number one that was held and uh, the beginnings of this project really looked at reviewing the existing conditions within the neighborhoods uh, in Ward uh, 1 and then uh, gathering feedback from uh, residents through that PIC in terms of, uh, you know, what the concerns are and uh, what the areas of, uh, of focus really should be for the study. From there, um, Earlier this year, we started looking at all of that information that we received and started building problems or, or developing problem and opportunity statements based on the feedback. And then looking at what potential options exist to, uh, to solve those issues. And then that brings us to where we're at today, where we're presenting some of those potential solutions and looking for feedback again from the public on what their thoughts are, what your thoughts are on what those uh, solutions really uh, are to you and if they meet uh, the needs of, of what you're looking for from this study, study or on your street. Uh, 
moving into later this year, we're going to finalize uh, the plan based on that kind of uh, feedback that we received from uh, PIC number two. And then after, once the study's finished, we're moving on to implementing the measures that are identified by the study uh, in 2025 and onwards. So I've got on the screen here a map of the study area for the Complete Streets study. And you can see it includes Strathcona, Kirkendall North, and Kirkendall South. And it's just a reminder uh, that we talked about in PIC number one that this uh, study focuses on local and collector roadways and not on arterials. Uh, we have a different method to uh, look at what happens on arterial roadways. And um, uh, the, our work regularly touches on what's happening on arterial roadways, uh, but not so much with on neighborhood streets. And that's where the complete street study for Ward 1 really comes into uh, play that this is a, a way that or a method that we can look at what's happening on neighborhood streets and then come up with ways to uh, to improve their function. Some of the key features that are on the map, which are um, critical to kind of the, the work that's being conducted are uh, some of those important um, features within the ward, such as schools, parks, and community centers that attract residents and uh, and add to the enjoyment of neighborhoods. As I mentioned, one of the first steps that we do is we look at the background and we, we look at information that we have as a municipality and um, we start building a picture of, of what the existing conditions look like within the neighborhoods. Uh, so we'll examine the, the existing uh, construct of the transportation network. We will look at where uh, intersection operations uh, exist, such as traffic signals or stop controls and those sorts of things. Uh, we go through and we look at the collision information that we have uh, for the ward that uh, captures all of the, um, uh, the collisions that have occurred within the past 10 years. And then we're using that information to help show where there may be some, some points of concern from a, from a collision perspective. Uh, we also leverage the technical guidelines that we have as a municipality, whether they're the Complete Streets uh, uh, Manual or other uh, council approved documents that uh, provide framework or guidance as to how we deal with uh, roadway safety or the function of transportation network. Um, and then we're also looking at some of the other projects that are happening within the ward that aren't uh, directly related to this work, but have some bearing or impact to uh, to this work. So we're making sure that those two uh, efforts are coordinated to each other. And we're not gonna create conflicts with the recommendations in the complete street study uh, against some of these other projects or vice versa. And some key ones up on the screen here are of course the LRT project and the two-way conversion of Main Street. Uh, York Boulevard is currently under construction. Um, uh, so that's another big piece that that we're looking at too. And then there's some other work that's occurring on Lock Street, uh, King York and Margaret. Uh, and then some uh, some work that's just completed in around Victoria Park. So uh, we're really looking at that and making sure that the recommendations that we're, we're going to propose in the ward uh, study is complementary to those activities and not going to cause uh, conflicts. PIC number one, uh, there were two of them actually split between Kirkendall and Strathcona. That's true for the in-person um, PICs for, for PIC number two. They were held back in December of 2023. And that's the point in time where we were collecting or asking residents to provide us their input into what the issues and concerns are in their neighborhoods. Uh, the primary method for uh, residents to provide that feedback uh, was the PIC or the Engage Hamilton website where we had an interactive map where uh, residents can go in and pin within their neighborhoods or within other neighborhoods the issues that they see and then uh, uh, provide some context as far as what those uh, those issues are. So through those efforts, both the PIC and uh, the Engage Hamilton, we received over 300 comments from the public and those are displayed on the map that's on the screen. Uh, all the dots are uh, a capture of the um, of the comments. And we also have some categorization of those comments that are color coded. Uh, if you can see them, um, you know, we, we receive a lot of uh, similar comments so we're making sure that we're, we're putting them together and categorize them into like groups. 
After we got these comments and with discussions with the ward office, we um, came up with a problem and opportunity statement that is really meant to guide the uh, the study going forward and uh, provides kind of the first principles of what the uh, the complete final complete street study and the measures that are being implemented are supposed to um, uh, provide to the residents uh, and the communities. So I'll just read it. Uh, residents in Strathcona and Kirkendall have consistently voiced concerns about safety on the streets that connect them to their neighborhoods. They want residential streets that encourage and enable walking, cycling, and safe connections. The Strathcona and Kirkendall neighborhood complete street safety study aims to address safety concerns and help support the needs of people who call these communities home. Uh, that That's the draft problem and operate opportunity statement and what we're looking for is uh, any feedback that we have from residents who live in these neighborhoods um, and uh, what we're really wanting to know is does this uh, statement reflect what you believe uh, the issues are in your neighborhood and what the intent of this study um, is is going to deliver so if you do have any comments or suggestions into uh, refining the problem statement then uh, we're quite happy to receive those and uh, we'll take those comments into consideration when we move forward and we'll finalize this statement uh, in time and it'll make an appearance in the final study. As I mentioned, we collected a lot of uh, great input from residents um, during the engage engagement phase. And um, we have, uh, or the consultant that's working on this has taken those uh, all of those touch points and they've categorized them even uh, in more refined categories that's really helpful in helping to determine the types of measures that, that will be used to uh, deal with these concerns. So you'll see that there's some more um, succinct categorization of issues uh, w based on those uh, uh, those points of input that we received. So you'll see the categories uh, on the screen in front of you uh, revolve around accessibility, active transportation facilities, crossings, cut through traffic, safety, sight lines, speed, and stop sign compliance. Uh, so these are the general uh, categories where there was consistent comments and uh, we're slotting all of those comments into these categories like I mentioned to influence where we're going to go with the recommendations. Of course, there's um, concerns that uh, fall outside of these categories and those aren't lost. This is just a method of us refining some of the uh, commentary that we received into uh, some some uh, concise way of looking at, at things so that we can really make sure we're attending to the general concerns of the neighborhoods. The next steps for this study after PIC number two is to uh, finalize a list of recommended measures based on public feedback. I mentioned that uh, this PIC is kind of a stopping point in which we've developed a number of uh, suggested solutions and we're looking for feedback from the public as far as what your thoughts are on those measures. And then we'll take that feedback and then we'll move towards uh, from from being conceptual or, or a commentary type of uh, rec uh, suggestions to something that's more final that will uh, basically be implemented once the study is finished. So developing the prior prioritization for measures uh, is an important function after the list of recommendations has been completed and typically we'll categorize those into three different things, uh, short term, medium term, and long term. Uh, and that's to uh, make sure that we're able to uh, start making progress on the implementation of these measures in uh, a very short term or quick action after the study is done. So short term typically are measures that are things that are inexpensive and easy and uh, quick quick to uh, deploy. And then as we get into medium and long term, those are things that require uh, a bit more effort, maybe engineering design or construction that take more money and longer time to put in place. Uh, so Part of the prioritization is that we'll be looking at uh, putting things into categories of short-term, medium-term, and long-term from a delivery perspective. And there's also a prioritization of uh, from a safety context. So if we ever receive any comments that um, or anything's flagged to us that is illegitimate and uh, 
uh, currently occurring safety issue, those are things that we want to set aside and deal with those right away. And then uh, everything that's left over, we also want to put a lens of of safety exposure or risk exposure too to help with prioritization. So sometimes you'll see some intermingling of short term, medium term, and long term from a safety perspective too. So if it's um, higher safety risk, it would move into the short term uh, measures as opposed to the long term, for example. Once we have that, of course, uh, costing is always a big piece, developing the costing estimates um, and identifying the potential integration with planned projects. The costing piece is, is an important one um, as the, the funding strategy to deliver the short, medium term, long term uh, recommendations is an important piece. So they make sure that we have the budget that's that's uh, there and available to us to start implementing all of those measures. And then the last uh, reference there about plan projects is whenever we have larger reconstruction projects planned for the neighborhood that we're taking these recommendations and we're putting those things together so that we're not going in and reconstructing uh, streets for several, several times that we want to do at once. And then we you know, if there's an opportunity to uh, to align uh, a future capital reconstruction of a street with these recommendations that we want to connect those things together so it happens all at one time. The other thing that's just uh, with with this report and the uh, the status of things as they are today, um, it's important to just know that um, uh, we'll use the recommendations as a guide for uh, future analysis and inter interventions, including design and implementation. And sometimes those things might change where we envision a solution today, but circumstances arise in the future that uh, kind of alters or changes our ability to, to um, deliver those interventions in the same way that they were first envisioned. So there's always some, uh, some uh, possibility that things might change slightly based on those sorts of conditions. So when you do see uh, either this uh, PIC, the recommended um, uh, measures in this one or the final one, uh, some of those things may be different than what is actually implemented on the street. But the objectives are still the same. The objectives still revolve around uh, making the neighborhood you know, friendlier and safer, safer places to live. From the beginning and and uh, and continuing, uh, public impact input is really important for these types of projects. Um, no one knows uh, what's happening on their neighborhood streets more than the people that live there. So we really rely heavily on um, the feedback that we receive from residents, uh, and and as well, you know, the the traditional kind of uh, data that we collect with collision data and those sorts of things. But public feedback is really important. Um, and we really want to to get that feedback from you continuously on this project. At this stage now, it's more about looking at some of the measures that we've come up with. And we're really, really looking for feedback into whether you uh, agree with those measures, uh, you don't agree with them, or you think that there's not enough of them, or there's too many of them. Uh, all that feedback is really important for us as we move from this stage uh, into uh, taking these proposed measures uh, and making them into the final recommended measures for the project. So we do have the the um, some contact information at the end of this slide deck, and we have a couple platforms in which you can engage with those discussions. And we're uh, trying to make sure that we we uh, are enabling open discussions and and giving lots of uh, ways for residents to provide feedback. The other important piece is that uh, we always record all of the input that we receive um, through the course of the study. Uh, those are documented um, for us and they make an appearance in the final report as well. Uh, so if you do make a comment, that comment is recorded and it's not lost. It is uh, it is defines or, or it makes, uh, makes its way into the final uh, study as well. So those things are not ever lost. So staying connected, um, the project updates and uh, and the further engagement are on the Engage Hamilton page. And there's a link to the Engage Hamilton website on the screen. And we have two primary contacts, Brad Wiley. He is the project manager within my team that's really looking after this study. So Brad's contact information is on your screen. And then our consulting partner, Dylan Consulting, who is actually conducting the study, uh, Mike Walters is their lead on it and his uh uh, contact information is on the screen as well. And of course, you can always contact the ward counselor's office who can connect you with us. Uh, and I know that they're happy to receive any feedback as well about this study and pass that along to the project team as well.
So that's kind of the quick uh, wrap up of the PIC that we held in person for PIC number two and the objectives. And uh, the key piece that I'm not showing today uh, in this in this piece is the actual uh, uh, slide deck showing all of the recommended measures. And uh, those uh, those slides are available on the city's webpage on the engagement webpage, and you can view all of those. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the most important part to look at are all those measures and the mapping that shows where those measures are. And we also have some um, some slides that show you uh, what some of those measures look like if you're unfamiliar with the terminology or, or what they actually look like so that can help you formalize your, uh, your comments. So that's another important piece, not just listening to this um, to this piece of it, but also going in and looking at the mapping and the proposed uh, uh, measures that are that are up front right now and looking for feedback from residents, uh, which will be taken from there to uh, to find to bring forward to a finalized set of recommendations for the complete street study. So thanks for listening. And uh, of course, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to use these contacts.